we uh, have a woman who went missing and they believe they can confirm that she has passed now. Her name is Sarah Everard. And mm-hmm. if you have been on social media at all, it is very likely that you have seen this case um, because it has started a huge conversation online. And I feel like we periodically have these conversations every time there is a high profile moment of not yeah. a high profile person, but a high profile case of mm. a woman going missing who was just walking home at night. And the response <sighs> from the police is always, well, women don't wear headphones. Don't walk alone at night. Don't yeah. leave the house after dark. Women, there's an attacker on the loose. So you all have to be, be aware and stay in. There's just, no, there's no onus on. On it's all men. It, it, the, <laughs> the only attackers. actionable item is for a woman to protect herself, and then it's, it it just ends up casting a, a blame on, on someone who cannot defend themselves anymore. And it's I don't know that conversation is I, I I was avoiding it at first, and then it sort of started digging into it this afternoon, and it's just it's so infuriating because it does feel like the same conversation over and over and over and, Mm -hmm. and the same kind of, you know, dissenting voices being like, well, what's so wrong about you not going outside at night? Like what? Like just, and just the implication that you're asking for, you know, to be murdered. Like it's just such an absurd concept that I, I, uh, it's so discouraging. And also just like kind of the precedent set of like, (laughs) I feel like, you know, women in general are just asked to like talk about the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to them in their life several times a year, see no, you know, progress really made in terms of how we're treated. And then, okay, well, here's the next time you need to talk about the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Um, And we'll see if it works this time. Like, it's just so frustrating and exhausting. And yeah, oh god i yeah that the the details of that case are so 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 upsetting and she was just walking home from a friend's house she walked for under an hour uh it wasn't like four o'clock in the morning even if it was you should be fucking safe there are countries in this world where women are safe to walk around in the streets it is possible Mm -hmm. it's not an inherently british or american thing sure It's it's not something in the water here uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a choice it's a societal choice it's a mm-hmm. it's an upbringing it's a it's a consciousness mm-hmm. and and it's a fucking decision and it needs to be treated in that way and she uh the wave of tut tuts when it was announced she'd gone missing of like well i mean that's very late for a young woman to be walking alone why is that the conversation you know i i told you um before when we were talking about uh dr jackson katz who yes. uh, gave a TED talk called Violence Against Women. It's a men's issue. And I just want to read to everyone what he, what he says, which perfectly highlights A, the, the, the problem with the rhetoric around this crisis that we continue to be in for yet another fucking year, another mm-hmm. century that, you know, this shit. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think he also in this highlights why it's still happening. Mm. So he says, We talk about how many women were raped last year, not about how many men raped women. We talk about how many girls in a school district were harassed last year, not about how many boys harassed girls. We talk about how many teenage girls got pregnant in the state of Vermont last year, rather than how many men and teenage boys got girls pregnant. So you can see how the use of this passive voice has a political effect. It shifts the focus off men and onto boys. Sorry. It shifts the focus off men and boys onto girls and women. Even the term violence against women is problematic. It's a passive construction. There's no active agent in the sentence. It's just a bad thing that happens to women. It's a bad thing that happens to women. But when you look at that term violence against women, nobody is doing it to them. It just Mm -hmm. happens. Men aren't even a part of it. Fuck me. I almost hate that a man said that. It's I'm so like, infi- it, it kills me. It, it kills me. I'm so I'm angry. I'm jealous. I'm it. feeling so many things. <laughs> um yeah. But he it fucking was, nailed it. He did. He really and I that I mean that's present in the Sarah Everard story. That's present in God, so much stuff that's been on my mind recently. Uh, it's, of, it's 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 present in history. 
Yeah. Never mind just one person's story. That's, that's it. That's the fucking problem. It's the problem is how we talk about it and how much, mm-hmm. we, what we don't talk about. And so I feel like this is the first time the discourse has moved away from just so many women coming out and saying, you know, all the different things they have to do in order to protect themselves. You know, I have a, a thing that I do to get home safe mm-hmm. that I'll tell you about now. I don't know if I've talked about it in this podcast before. It doesn't make me sound super stable, but also <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> As we know. So I, and this is kind of sad and ridiculous at the same time. I run as if I'm already being chased. So I am looking behind me. I keep looking behind me as if I'm already mm-hmm. running away from someone mm-hmm. in the hopes, because <laughs> this world is so fucked, <laughs> that a man who might consider chasing me will be like, Anna, Anna, she's, oh she's already taken. <laughs> she's already taken. <laughs> Someone's already got that one. I'll wait for the next one. And so, that is galaxy that is- brain. <laughs> 